Life Audio. Teach Us to Pray is brought to you by Life Audio and is a part of our Faith Toolkit series. For more inspirational, faith-affirming podcasts, visit lifeaudio.com. On the Teach Us to Pray podcast, we have talked about several ways that God still speaks to His people today. We've talked about how we can hear God through His Word, hear Him as we pray, how God speaks to us in our current and even our past experiences. And today, I want to expound on that conversation. We're going to be talking about how we can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So if you need comfort, guidance, discernment, and wisdom from God, this is the episode for you. Stay tuned. Welcome back, friend. You are listening to the Teach Us to Pray podcast, where we teach believers practical and real life tips on how to grow your faith and relationship with God through the power of prayer. I'm Christina Patterson, host of the Teach Us to Pray podcast and founder of Beloved Women, where I have the honor of encouraging, equipping, and empowering women and the love and truth of Jesus Christ. And so I think my last episode on the Teach Us to Pray podcast was sometime in July, probably. I planned on recording episodes throughout the summer. However, I quickly realized that once my children got out of school and they were home, that things were going to be a little bit different. (laughs) So I decided to take some time off to make sure that my children receive the appropriate attention from their mother during the fun summer months, but they are back in school. We are in full swing of things of back to school, of fall sports, even though it's not quite fall yet, and just all the things. But it's really good to be back with you on the podcast. How have you been? How was your summer? Mine was really good, but it was super Fast. We had opportunity to travel to Texas to see my dad. The kids did a little bit of summer camp, but that was kind of busy and chaotic in and of itself because they had so many activities involved with that, which was good because we wanted to keep them engaged and entertained over the summer. And they were. And of course, we saw family and friends and it was just a really good summer. I wouldn't call it restful. (laughs) It wasn't a restful summer, but it definitely was a memorable summer that will go down in the Patterson books to remember. (laughs) And so since it was such a busy and fun filled summer, um, how I connected with God changed a little bit. Not the fact that I did connect with God, but just the methods in which I used to connect with God changed because I was in a different season. And that's something that we have to really be aware of when it comes to our spiritual growth and our connection with God And is that it's not always going to look the same in every season. And that is what makes having the Holy Spirit in your life so powerful. Because here's the truth. The Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, sent to us after Jesus left to comfort, guide, give us wisdom, isn't just with us, isn't just near us, but the Holy Spirit dwells in us, which means we have the opportunity to connect with God every single moment, even when life is crazy. And this is so important if you are in a busy season because Sometimes when we're in these seasons, we feel like, oh, I'm just busy. I just can't connect with God. And that's not true. You're already connected to God. It's just a matter of tapping into that connection wherever you are. And one of the ways that we can do that is by our ability to hear the voice of the Spirit, to hear and sense the leading of the Spirit, no matter how busy we are or what's going on in our life. And that is the role, the job, the responsibility of the Holy Spirit and why the Holy Spirit dwells in us to be that resource and that connection to God for us at all times. So today, I would like to talk to you about how you can hear the voice of the Spirit. In the intro for this podcast, I shared with you that 
we're kind of going through an unofficial series about how God speaks to us. We have episodes on how to hear from God through his word, how to hear God in prayer, how God speaks through your current circumstances, how God speaks through your past circumstances. We've even talked about how God will speak to us through confirmation and how we can get confirmation from God on what we think it is that he's trying to communicate to us. And so today is part of that series, and I will link the previous episodes in this series below. But today we're going to talk about how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. The first way to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit is to know God's word. So if you want to go back to the episode called How to Hear God Through His Word, that's going to be very powerful for you because if you feel like you are being led by the Holy Spirit to do something, if you sense that the Holy Spirit is moving you in a certain direction or trying to communicate something to you, you have to know that it's never going to contradict God's word. So that is, and that goes for any way that you feel like God is speaking to you. It's not going to contradict his word that we have in the Bible, because the Bible is the word of God. It is his love letter to us, and it does not change. It will outlast everything. (laughs) God's word does not fail. The Bible tells us that God's word will not come back to him void. And so what that means is that is that God's word is truthfully eternal. It will not change. And so if we feel like we're getting some sort of revelation from God, but it doesn't align with his word, we can be sure that that is that that revelation is not from God. If we feel like the Holy Spirit is leading us in a certain direction, but it doesn't align with the word of God, We can be confident that that is not the Holy Spirit. God's Holy Spirit in us leading us is something else, something completely different. And so this is why it's so important for us to know God's word through reading his word, through studying his word, through meditating on the word. We have an entire episode on how to meditate on the word of God because we need God's word written on our hearts so that when we do feel like we might be hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit or being led by the Holy Spirit, we have this compass to let us know, yep, that is it. That is him speaking to you. So knowing God's word is essential. And you'll probably actually hear me say that in a lot of these episodes as far as how God speaks to us, because, you know, there are so many ways that God speaks to us. But if you feel like, well, I don't really feel like I have I'm hearing the voice of God or I'm being led by the Holy Spirit or, you know, having some sort of revelation or anything like that. That's fine, because everybody will hear from God through his word, through his written word that you can read and listen to. So no one is exempt from saying, well, God doesn't speak to me. No. Yes, he does. You have his word and that's why he gave it to us. So it starts there. Knowing God's word is the foundation to hearing from him because it's his very words to us. The second way that you can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and the leading of the Holy Spirit in your life is to be still and to be quiet. So Psalm 46 verse 10 says, be still and know that I am God. And this scripture has always been an encouragement to me And probably for you, too, if you're familiar with the verse, because sometimes when life is crazy and it feels like the waves of circumstances in our lives are drowning us, it can be overwhelming. And the last thing that we think that we want to do is be still. Well, right. We want to move. We want to change things. We want to make things better. We want to do all the things. Right. And what will happen is we'll end up operating in the flesh and not making space for the Holy Spirit to really do what we cannot do in our own lives. And so I've read this verse so many times, be still and know that I am God. But it was always a reminder for me to just be still because God is God and he's going to do what I can't do, which is a great reminder for you today. 
But as I was preparing for today's episode, the verse just kind of really hit me in the fact that it says, be still and know. Almost like being still is a prerequisite to knowing, experiencing, hearing the power and presence of God and his Holy Spirit in your life. So that there are certain things about God that can't be revealed to us, that we can't know if life is so loud, if we're so busy, if we can't be still. So it is so important for us to be still if we really want to be led by the Holy Spirit, because God is not going to yell for your attention. He is not going to do that. That's not his character. He doesn't need to do that because he is God. But we need to be still to have a revelation of his power in our lives. We need to be still as a prerequisite to knowing and experiencing him in our lives. It makes me wonder how the Holy Spirit might be trying to speak to us in a particular season, but we can't hear him because we're not still. And I know that this is particularly challenging this day and age because we have our phones and our devices and our computers and we are always on. (laughs) We are always accessible. We always have something that we can be doing in the palm of our hands. But what has not changed (laughs) is God's word that says, be still and know. That has not changed. And so what we need to do then is operate in alignment with the word of God if we want to hear the Holy Spirit in our lives. And that requires being still. Now, I know that this is hard, but being still, being in the presence of God is a discipline, just like prayer, just like fasting, just like reading and memorizing scripture. It's all a spiritual practice. And practice does not mean perfection. Practice just means I'm doing something over and over again until I progress in it to get better at it. So we don't need to beat ourselves up and say, oh, my gosh, I'm so busy. I didn't spend time with God. I didn't sit in God's presence. You know, we don't have to do all that. But we can do is be intentional about saying, you know what? I want to take two minutes every day and just be still in the presence of the Lord. I'm not going to try to get a revelation or a word or anything. I'm just going to be still in his presence because it's in that stillness that the scripture tells us that we come to a knowledge of God that we would not have otherwise, that we would not have in our hustle, in our rushing, in trying to do all the things. So it's being still that is key to being able to hear from God. And so you start with those two minutes and then maybe you move up to five and then you do a practice of 10 minutes, right? It doesn't have to be much. It's just it's practice. And see how that transforms your relationship with God. I'm speaking to myself on this one, y'all, because I really can use a little bit more time being still in the presence of God myself. (laughs) But I do know that it's in that stillness where we experience a knowledge of him that's so powerful and life changing. The final way that I want to share with you that you can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit in your life and since the leading of the Holy Spirit in your life is by stirring up the Spirit, stirring up the Spirit. You know, when we all become believers, we all have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. That is the gift that God gives to those who place their faith in Christ. However, that Holy Spirit has to be stirred up. So I kind of Think of it as like a glass of milk, of whole milk, and a glass of white whole milk, and you pour chocolate syrup in it, right? The chocolate syrup is a little bit thicker than the milk, so it usually floats to the bottom of the glass. And you won't even know that it's there yet. It's just sitting on the bottom, but it's there. Now, when you start to, when you get a spoon and you put it in the glass and you start stirring it up, what happens? That white milk starts to turn a creamy, chocolatey, brown color. 
It visually changes. It tastes different. It even has an entirely new name. It's chocolate milk now, right? The Holy Spirit operates the same way in our lives. God deposits the Holy Spirit in your life, in your soul, the moment you become a Christian. That is his deposit saying, he's mine. She's mine. When Jesus comes back, she comes to me. He comes to me. God's going to come back for what is his. That is that is the, what the deposit of the Holy Spirit in us does. It is proof that God's going to come back for what's his, you and me. But in order to operate in the power of the Holy Spirit here on this side of eternity, the spirit has to be stirred up. It has to be stirred up to actually experience the gifts of the spirit in our lives. One of them being able to sense the leading of the Holy Spirit, hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. And so a lot of people will say, oh, well, I need to I need more patience. I need more joy. I need more love. Here's the thing. You already have those things. If you're a believer, they are deposited in you from God. You already have them because they are the fruit of the spirit that are gifts from God to those who place their faith in Jesus Christ. What you need to do is operate in those gifts. Start those gifts up. Right. The Bible talks about, you know, we have the opportunity to feed the flesh or feed the spirit and whatever you feed more is what is going to show up more in your life, is what's going to have more power in your life. If you feed the flesh, the Bible tells us that will lead to destruction. If you feed the spirit, that tells us that will lead to life. So that goes back to reading our Bibles, praying, fellowshipping with other believers. This is how we stir up the spirit in our souls so that we can have an ear and a heart and a mind to recognize the leading and the voice of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so these are things that were very important to me this summer to be able to do, to hear the leading of the Holy Spirit, because I did not have time for extensive Bible studies. And honestly, I was kind of tired. I needed some spiritual rest as well, but I was still connected. And so are you. And it is my hope that The lessons that you learned in today's episode have inspired you to know God's word so that you can know his voice, to be still so that you can know God in a way that you otherwise wouldn't, and to stir up the spirit so that you could experience all the gifts of the spirit in your life. It is my hope that today's episode has provided you with insight and helpful tips on how you can pray. As a gift to you, be sure to download my free five-day prayer guide and take my prayer personality quiz to learn how you best hear and connect with God. You may find all links in today's show. We have so much more to talk about when it comes to prayer, so I hope that if you were encouraged by today's episode, you'll share it with a friend and subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes of the Teach Us to Pray podcast, where we will continue to learn how just like breathing, prayer can become a natural, consistent, and life-giving part of our everyday lives. Until then, be sure to connect with me at belovedwomen.org and join me on the Beloved Women app for unlimited videos to grow your faith, learn God's word, and encourage your soul available now in the Apple and Google Play stores. Thank you so much for taking time to listen today. God bless you, and I'll talk to you in the next episode. Teach Us to Pray is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com.